Hey guys, I hope that you're doing very well. Today I wanted to share with you one kind of like insight or personal experience. And I think that this particular insight can be helpful to anyone who finds themselves in a, in a kind of tricky situation when they feel stuck, when they try a lot of things, they do everything uh, from acceptance, letting go of trying to control sleep, they uh, stop doing a lot of sleep efforts, but they still experience trouble sleeping no matter how hard they try. And this episode is going to be dedicated to the topic of goals and the way how we set them and how these goals are impacting our journey towards peaceful sleep. So I hope that you will find it helpful. I want to say, as always, that I'm not a doctor, not a psychotherapist, so nothing here is a medical or a therapy advice. I'm just sharing my general thoughts and ideas, and I hope that some of you might find it helpful and uh, maybe encouraging and motivating. So let me begin by saying that, you know, when something like this happens and we experience difficulties despite a lot of work that we've put into the process and it can be of course be discouraging and demotivating and uh, I completely understand people who feel frustrated from you know putting a lot of work into it and not seeing the, the real outcome but I think the reason why that happens lies in in the way how we define goals for ourselves because when we begin to struggle with our sleep and uh, usually we develop very physical fear of sleeplessness and the whole our existence kind of screams like okay you need to get some sleep it's it's very bad it's dangerous that you are awake and so that kind of fear urges us to do a lot of things to try to fix the situation so our natural goal in in the beginning or in in the middle of the journey uh, looks something like this i need to get back control over my sleep, I need to learn how to sleep, I need to ensure a certain outcome. So for us, the, the goal here is to make sleep controllable. And the measurement of success we use here is the sleep itself, sleep as outcome. So we measure if we are doing well or not based on how many hours we slept, how we felt, how refreshed we are or how what kind of emotions we experience whether we are calm or whether we are agitated and based on that we kind of um, rate our performance and of course when we don't receive like positive you know uh, measurements of course we feel more urged to try harder but the paradox with this is that the sleep itself is passive so we cannot really you know, produce sleep because because of just will. So we cannot produce sleep by doing something. So sleep is always something that happens to us, not something that we actively do. And this is where it kind of like uh, creates this paradox. So our natural goal here is to get more sleep, but the sleep cannot be obtained through trying to sleep. So now the very logical question from anyone would be okay so if my goal to have like you know to control sleep is not helpful for me so what is the goal that I should set for myself and that would be a really good question because now it kind of uh, it helps us to uh, you know shift our attention to something else something more helpful so in order to identify a helpful goal in this process let's try to kind of um, you know, reverse engineer here. So think about like when we have peaceful sleep, when we didn't do anything and it just happens, maybe you can imagine or remember yourself uh, it, during the times before your insomnia. And then if you ask yourself, what did you do? How did you feel so that you slept, you know, fine? And most probably like the answer would be, well, I did nothing. There was complete peace. There was no even a thought about sleep. Uh, whether we should fix it or should we do this or that or that. So there was complete absence of efforts. And now, so for that sleep for to come effortlessly, we need to have certain 
soil or certain ground ground for it like where there are no efforts where there's no struggle no pressure no fear right now how do we get that uh, you know um, uh, state of mind and usually what what happens here is that to get to state where we are not trying to do anything when we uh, we don't have any sleep efforts when we are not thinking about it is to have no problem is to see no problem there because all the all the urges that arise during insomnia they arise because somewhere deep inside we detect or the brain detects a problem and it tries to problem solve it so the source look of the problem is that we see things as a problem so it is a matter of how we relate to the fact that we are awake now now it kind of like by reversing back we realize that we need to change the relationship with wakefulness instead of now when we let's say we have difficulty sleeping and we consider oh this is not okay this is not normal we need to uh, change or shift our perception towards something it's okay to be awake at night it's i'm not in like i'm not in any danger i'm safe no matter how the night unfolds whatever emotions arise they're also safe and i'm you know in general we we are safe so once we no longer see their problem in any night that's when we feel more at peace and that creates a very uh like fertile soil for for sleep to happen naturally so so now the the second or or the the helpful goal here is to become unattached to any outcome of how the night goes because once we approach that once we approach our perception of any night including the nights when we don't sleep ideally or when, or when the sleep gets delayed or we wake up several times a night or, or we wake up too early or we wake up unrefreshed once we kind of like normalize that experience and let that let it be allow it to be to be with us that's when the whole situation changes that's where the transformation actually happens and we start feeling more at peace so now, just to kind of like uh, recap here. So the first uh, goal, which is like kind of like uh, in intuitive here is like, of course, I, we need to do something to fix sleep as soon as possible. And the second goal is show ourselves that it is okay, no matter what the night, no matter how the night looks like, become unattached from, from the outcome, normalize our experience so that we are not reacting anyhow specifically to a night when we sleep let's say four hours and the night where we sleep like nine hours so it, it's so kind of like the reaction to take away the fearful reaction from that so that becomes like two fundamentally different goals and uh interesting is that this once we have like a certain goal kind of installed in us it affects our behavior the behavior that arises from the place of trying to get sleep under control eventually turns into efforts. So we can be doing even the best practices that we know, for example, acceptance, listening to our emotions. But when our fundamental goal is to make sleep controllable, to achieve a certain outcome, and when we perceive that, okay, once I start sleeping eight hours a, a, a night, that's when I, I'm kind of succeeding here. And we do, and we try to achieve that, through let's say some mindfulness exercises or acceptance practices that's when we can find a lot of frustration in seeing that no matter how hard we try to accept we are not getting the the outcome and uh, the problem here is that we begin to expect the acceptance to produce sleep and while in reality nothing actually can you know external can produce sleep it is always our body that know how to do the job and they can never forget how to do the job so our task is to show that we are safe so the body can naturally transition to uh to the sleep state now when we look at the same situation uh let's say someone is trying to do the acceptance work and we uh, uh kind of like swap the 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 goal here instead of trying to control sleep we act from the place of trying to be okay with any outcome that's when that practice can bring like fundamental shifts and, and and tremendous help to us so when we begin to accept so that we 
treat any sort of night as you know like as, as a normal night as something that it can happen and, and we are allowed to to experience that this is when it, it gets very helpful now during our journey what i noticed and that's what i went personally myself through is that we tend sometimes get off the track for a while and that is completely normal so sometimes the goals here like maybe even if we started to uh like we changed our goal and we started working towards you know showing ourselves that it's okay no matter what the outcome is and sometimes we find ourselves that oh we are again struggling and uh, usually this place kind of um gets like uh, sticky and the speed bump gets longer but oftentimes like somehow secretly the brain kind of changes back the the initial kind of like a goal to control sleep and we don't really um, realize that so in that moment it's it's um, good to understand first of all that it's normal that that the sleep will or the brain will occasionally which will try to in, inject some of the sleep efforts or try to really like uh, get us back into the game of chasing sleep so it's completely normal nothing to really uh, you know judge yourself for and the second thing is that we can always kind of like look how to calibrate that how to shift uh, our goal back to the way to be unattached from the outcome and and once we do that that's how that's when we get usually unstuck so let's say we've been struggling for a long time with let's say acceptance work or let's say we are um we decided to take away all the sleep efforts and we try really to really do nothing at night so that we are not trying hard right uh, but then we are acting obviously from this from the place of trying to get control over over sleep and then uh, not not finding relief in that activity of not doing anything, we can ask ourselves, okay, what am I actually doing here? What is my goal? Why, why am I doing this? And then if certain like expectations arise, well, I'm doing this so that I can sleep. And that's where we have our uh, like clue about, okay, somehow the brain kind of like sneaked in the, the desire to control sleep back into our, you know, in our agenda. So... And that's when it gets tricky but simply by being aware of what has happened in terms of like okay i see i see why not doing anything did not work for me because i was expecting that by not doing anything i'm supposed to you know i'm supposed to sleep and then trying to see how can we return get that uh, uh the the other goal back uh, in our kind of like uh, in our journey can be very helpful and another thing is that, okay, so not always that switch from one goal to another happens smoothly. And it's not really something like that happens fast. Uh, sometimes uh, for a long time, we cannot actually... The, the idea that we are safe and that there's nothing we need to be doing for sleep to happen might seem a bit strange for us and we might not believe that. And it's completely okay, especially that happens in the kind of like in the beginning uh, stages when we are still, there's a lot to learn. And I find that to make that shift from one goal to another, uh, education can be a tremendous help in that. So by understanding what is happening to us, why it happens, and demystifying all the experience that we have, we change our relationship with those experiences and with the fact that we are awake. So once we know that, okay, the, the weird sensations that we were feeling like heart palpitations or um, hypnic awareness, maybe it is like some anxious thoughts in itself they are just a product of our safety mechanism and we begin to see it as such as something that okay the brain thinks that being awake is uh, is a threat so that's why it acts this way but once we know that we can actually create some sort of a buffer between those experiences and ourselves which can help us see situation clearly and help us take like next next steps so because when we are completely immersed into believing the thoughts believing those experiences we don't have any room for us to reflect to observe that's when we can be kind of like played by our minds and be tricked into like acting on that fear but once we recognize what is happening and see it for what it is 
that's when the you know the the wicked and and and, and the and the mysterious power of that experience kind of like disappears. Suddenly we see all the experience that happen as something automatic, something that uh, contentless, impersonal, and most of all, something that is fleeting, something that just comes there. It does not mean anything in terms of like, oh, there's something that's really terrible going to happen. It is more like the brain just detected uh, that there is a possibility of not sleeping, so it tries to warn us. But in itself, those signals are merely uh, just, a, just, just, just a signal, just a messenger to tell us something. So once we change that relationship, it is easier for us also to do that shift towards like being unattached to the outcome, because we know that whatever we are going through, it is not something that actually poses uh, a physical threat to us. And once that perception is changed, all our future behavior and decisions that come from the place of showing ourselves that it's okay to be, you know, to experience any sort of night, they start kind of like giving their fruits in terms of feeling more at peace, trying less, and then just witnessing how sleep eventually happens. And we cannot even figure out how it happens because it's just like something that comes and then something, you know, uh, and sometimes it can be, can get bumpy. But again, with patience and showing more and more to our brain that there is nothing to be afraid of, that can eventually, that state of, of acceptance, of welcoming becomes very intuitive. It, like we, we learn to let go by gradually showing ourselves that it's safe to let go every single night. And with time, that state of letting go becomes more, um, more, more natural to us. So if someone finds that it's very difficult to accept, to really uh, stop caring about sleep, just know that it doesn't happen instantly. It does, it, 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 some learning process has to happen and we need to be mindful of our goals because that's, that that's can actually point us where the struggle arises when we feel stuck and we don't know where, why certain things do, don't, don't uh, work for us, investigate the intention, investigate the goal there. What is the goal that you are doing this particular thing that you're, that you're doing? And the answer is like, yeah, I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I'm hoping that I will be sleeping. Then it gets tricky. But when we shift that narrative in terms of like, okay, I, I'm doing this because it just makes me feel good in this moment. I know that I I might not sleep or my sleep will not might not be exactly how how I like, but at the same time I really want to do this thing now. So either it's like whatever mindfulness practices or maybe watching some favorite TV show, listening to the music, to podcasts, or just you know lying down in your bed, just chilling, whatever it is. Now from that place of where our goal is to become non-attached, that's where things become kind of helpful to, to our journey.